Buddy, he's just waiting. Wait for the nice vet to come along and have a look at you. Okay, mate? At the Bondi Clinic, Mel is anxious for Chris to check out his newly adopted mate, Benji. Relax, Benji. It's okay, mate. It's okay. Benji is a rescue dog. I found him at an animal shelter and uh, fell in love with him and I decided to adopt him. Um, at the time, they did advise me that he had a heart murmur that required further investigation. Um, and I guess that's why I'm here. Mel is already besotted with a 12-month-old Australian Silky Terrier and is desperate to make sure his little buddy is OK. I've grown very attached to him. Uh, it's almost like a life-changing moment for me. I guess I've never had to have responsibility before in my life and uh, caring for him and looking after him uh, has been the best thing that's ever happened to me. How are you going? Hi. Is this Benji? Yes. yes. Yeah, how are you? Hi, I'm Mel. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. Come on through. Thank you. Cute dog. Yeah, he's a little little angel, he is. Very naughty. <laughs> okay, buddy. He's nervous. I know, he's so shaky. Yeah. How long have you had him for? Uh, three months. Yeah. yeah. He's a, a rescue dog. Yeah. And when I adopted him, they, the vet at the shelter said that uh, he picked up a little heart murmur. Okay. So even though you were told he had a heart murmur, you still yeah. adopted him? Yeah. Well, my heart went out to him. He was in a little cage with two other big Labradors. Um, he was very scruffy, very unkempt, um, looked scared, and um, he just leapt out at me and put his paws up on the cage and said, please take me, and uh, I couldn't say no. It's one thing to take on a dog from an animal shelter and give it a second chance, but to take on a dog that has a heart murmur, a really quite serious medical condition, that shows a lot of faith and a lot of belief in the fact that you're gonna be there for them. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Steve and Linda have arrived with three six-week-old kittens. Are you comfortable? Mm -hmm. Are you they found the tiny strays living in their garage. Although the couple have done their best to care for the vulnerable babies, the kittens have suddenly become sick. The long-haired kitten, she ended up like losing her actual balance and started throwing up. She got the runs a little bit. I am worried about her because, like being so small, they can go downhill really fast. Hi, Hello. I'm G'day. Lisa. G'day. How are you? Good, thanks. Uh, Steve and uh, Linda. Nice to meet you both. And who's this? This is a little stray kitten. Um, there actually was five of them. We lost two. Okay. But and the other how ones are okay. old are they now? They're around about uh, six weeks old now. Okay, all yeah. right. Look, we don't actually know what's causing the problem with these kittens. The most important thing that I can do is actually give them a full medical, make sure that they haven't got any life-threatening problems that we need to deal with straight away. All right, let me take a look at them. So mm. pop him down. Look at the little guy. Has he got a name? No. Not no, yet? No, not yet. <laughs> I don't know what they are. Miles because we're not quite sure, <laughs> yeah. Sorry, honey. Oh, it's a little boy. Little boy, okay. Let's just have a listen. Just gonna check if he's got a heart murmur. Okay. How's that sound? He does have a little heart murmur. Yeah. And he's obviously had some vomiting and, and yeah. diarrhea, so he's definitely got something going on with his gastrointestinal tract. And being this age, the most common thing is something infectious, the fact that the others haven't seemed quite right. Yeah. Um, if he hasn't been wormed, we could be dealing with some sort of parasite-like yes. worms. Um, the other thing that might be happening is just simple malnourishment. So if their mum's not a great yeah. feeder, they're not going to thrive. I think if you would have waited a few more hours, he would have come in here probably collapsed. Um, that's how quickly things can change. Linda and Steve have done an amazing job. The, these kittens aren't even technically theirs, and they're spending their own money to fix them, and these kittens are very, very lucky to have found them. 
Another little boy. Another boy. <laughs> He's also mm, not yeah, not a hundred percent. I think. Yeah, she's a lot smaller than. Yeah. Sometimes you just worry about them as well because they're also so small. Yeah. Okay. Well, let me take a look at the third okay. one. Okay. He's in much better condition yeah. than the other little guy. Hey. Yeah, your belly is a lot fuller than the yeah. others. Mm. You've been stealing all the food, mm -hmm. hey? Yep, we've got a girl. Oh, so okay. the lady of the bunch has been well. stealing all the food. <laughs> okay. So options are um, the two little boys that seem quiet and are not eating well. Um, the best possible yeah. thing we could do for them is probably putting them on a drip. The, yeah. the other thing is that they all are looking pale and it probably yeah. would be a good idea to take a little blood sample and just check yeah. um, right. how anemic they are. Yep. Look, these guys are so tiny that they can spiral out of control. I've seen kittens that come in looking okay and then a few hours later they've crashed and burned. So we've got to act fast, we've got to get those fluids into them. They're only little babies and they need that nutrition fast. Oh, my little guys. I'm on my way up to Devil Ark. Now, it's always concerning when I get a call for help. It's particularly concerning when that help is for our endangered Tasmanian devil. My Devil Ark manager, Dean, has called and he's got a joey, a small devil, could be in serious trouble. Australian Reptile Park general manager, Tim Faulkner, has been on the road for five hours. He's on his way to the remote Devil Ark in northwest New South Wales. Hi, oh, hey, mate. Hey, Tim, welcome. Yeah, cheers. Nice to see you. I've got Kira down here if you want to check good, her out. Mate, good. Yeah. I've just arrived at Devil Ark and I'm met straight away by Dean. And no mucking around, we've got to get down and see these devils. The Ark is the largest conservation breeding program of Tasmanian devils in Australia. With devil facial tumour wiping out the population, Tim is hoping insurance colonies like this one can stop the species yep. becoming extinct. So what actually happened? So we were trapping last night. Yep. Um, uh, we're doing our quarterly uh, health checks. Yep. And we found Kira with a joey, which is quite unusual. <laughs> it's just wild, mate. We are quite literally as far in the opposite direction of breeding season as we could be. And she's, uh, and she's weaning your joeys. We've got a joey five months out of a normal breeding season, which is unbelievable. We so don't hear of it this time of year. Tim and Dean are justifiably worried. A lone joey born out of the regular breeding season is at serious risk. Mum and Joey are in a yard of devils that are about to start breeding. testosterone fueled males. If I leave them in the yard and the joey weans, he'll be killed. At SASH, emergency vet Lisa Chimes is attempting to take blood from one of three sick stray kittens. So tiny. Lisa is worried that the tiny six week olds may be suffering from anemia. Let me see a little vein. I need to work out how anemic he is, as well as working out if his blood sugar level is low or not. So he's had not much to eat or drink, he's had some vomiting and diarrhea, he's only tiny and he can go downhill really quickly. In reception, foster parents Steve and Linda are anxiously waiting for news. They're just doing their best um, um, trying to survive. Fingers crossed it's all okay. Yay! Oh, you're all right, sweetie, that's good. You've got normal glucose. That's not bad. Let's try number two. This one is a little bit more of a wriggler. Well done. Oh, I knew you wouldn't oh, stay still. Wiggle. Okay. Well done. Oh, I managed can. Uh -huh. It's proving quite difficult to actually get a blood sample from him. He's got such tiny little veins. Not a happy camper. Oh, I managed can. I know. 
Oh, I know, you're right. Oh, oh I got a drop. <laughs> Right. 12.7, perfect. So we have two normal blood sugars. I'm not even going to test the third kitten because she's the one that actually has the most energy out of the lot. So I'm going to save her the pricks. Next step is we're going to pop the two little sick boys onto a drip, get some fluids into them. Hopefully they'll start feeling a lot better and get some food into them as soon as possible. While the two boys have to stay at Sash, there is some good news for their sister. With the actual girl kitten, she's actually coming home with us. She's strong enough to come home. That is a bit of good news. Come on, let's go home and get some sleep, eh? We're going to attempt to pop them on fluids. They've got tiny little legs and tiny little veins. All right, Bubby, you'll be good now. Come on, let's go. That was actually really brave. That cat that it went surprisingly well, I'm quite amazed how easily we got that vein. Can you go back to bed? Let's just hope your brother's is good. <laughs> so what did he weigh? 330. Oh, you're the little one. Yeah, the tiniest one, but the hardest one to handle. <laughs> the naughtiest the pocket one rocket. <laughs> I can't even see it, it's just like collapsed. Oh, no. Okay, kitty fan. With such tiny veins, the question oh, is, Will Lisa be able to insert the much needed fluids into the sick stray? Look, if we don't get this in, we're not going to be able to give this kid an IV fluid. Right now he's fighting, he's a. Uh, it's not making our job much easier at all. <sighs> Dear me. There's just something I, I know he doesn't like me doing this to him, but mm -hmm. there's just something I, I'm interested in looking at here. Mm -hmm. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is examining Benji. It's okay, boo -boo. it's okay. The 12 month old Australian Silky Terrier has a heart murmur, and Chris is trying to confirm just how severe the problem is. So what I'm doing there is I'm actually pressing on his gums. By doing that, what I do is I force all the blood out of the gum. Mm -hmm and then wait for his own circulation, so his own blood pressure to push it back in. For a normal dog, it takes between about one and two seconds. With Benji, I'm gonna press. One, two, it's about three. Okay. So slow. It's quite slow. Mm -hmm. What that's really telling me is that his circulation isn't really doing its job. It's not forcing the blood around the body to those places where it's needed, and that worries me. Are you seeing any other signs? I mean, is there anything day to day that you notice that you, you think isn't quite right? Yeah, um, he gets overtired very easily, especially on hot days. He starts to almost um, wheeze, like he's not getting enough oxygen in his lungs. Mm. He actually cries, mm. like he gets tears in his eyes. Uh, I've never known a dog to cry or anything like that. I just can tell now that he's in pain. Mm. It's almost like he had a heart attack a couple of times after he's, 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 he just couldn't breathe and his heart was just um, going mm. like that. And um, I just sort of beat on the top here and his blood started going, oh, so he started breathing normally. When Mel tells me that Benji has trouble breathing, he wheezes, he looks like he's gonna collapse. They're all things that really worry me about this little dog. At one year of age, he should be running around madly, having the absolute time of his life. But he's not doing that, and that's a big concern. Okay. So I'm gonna listen to his heart. Okay, boo boo, it's okay. Let Dr. Chris look after you. I'll be honest, I'm almost nervous picking up my stethoscope to listen to Benji's chest. You can feel just how much Mel's invested emotionally in this little guy. A bit of bad news here, it could really crush him. Be a little bit careful, she's a bit feisty. Is she? Yeah, she's uh, protecting her den. At Devil Ark, Tim and manager Dean need to remove aggressive Kira from her den. She's a firecracker, mate. Yeah, she's pretty protective. The devil has given birth to a Joey five months out of breeding season, and Tim needs to make sure both mum and baby are healthy. Settle down. Well, it's going to be tricky, mate, but we need to catch mum first. Yep. 
separate her from the joey and then assess them both. Yep. One of the greatest risks here is that mum's cranky. She's defensive. Now, she's got teeth showing and she's going to bite. If the joey gets into the wrong spot because we do something, uh, we catch mum and she turns around to bite, she could bite the joey. We don't want that to happen. Okay, so just watch your fingers, mate, because she's going to have a chomp. It's all right, darling. You're all right. You can't see the joey? No, I can't no. see the joey. It's not running around. Okay, let's get this lid off. That's it. Okay, that's good, mate. I can see it, mate. Okay. Just under her there. Hey, settle down. If you just wave a boot, as yep. soon as she looks at you, I'm going to grab that tail and lift her up. Yep. Um, if the joey comes off, that's fine. Yep. If it stays on, perfect, I'll lift her up and then we'll remove him. Yep. she looking at you? Yep, looking at me. One, two, three. There we go. Okay. Now just watch out that she doesn't turn around, mate. Mm -hmm. Yep, okay. keep him there for a sec. That's good. Okay, there we go. Hey, hello, mate. You're all right. You're a little boy, mate. He's gorgeous, isn't he? Uh, you're all right. This little devil needs a name. And what better name for a devil born under these circumstances than Lucky? He's already feisty and little, isn't he? Growling. Yep. With Lucky now safely with Dean, Tim can make sure that Kira is healthy. OK. She looks good. Mum's physically perfect. She's in good condition. There are no scars, no battle wounds. Everything looks good. Now it's time to have a look inside the pouch. And I can see quickly that there's only one active teat. Now the other three, they're tiny, they're inactive, they're very small. It means she doesn't have any more joeys. Let's get mum away and then we'll have a look at him, hey? But I think we get her in that box nice and quiet now. That's the important thing. Mum's in the box and now I've got to have a look at the joey and I just want it to be healthy. It's a very odd circumstance, but this whole program is about breeding and these joeys. I hope he's okay. Relax, I don't take this look after you. At the Bondi Clinic, Chris is checking out a tiny rescue dog with a heart murmur. He's becoming increasingly worried the condition is far worse than owner Mel suspects. Normal heart murmurs, they're very subtle. This one, it's screaming in my ears. I'm looking at Chris and it's kind of scared me that he was taking so long. To me, that indicates that it might not be a normal heart murmur, that it could be something more severe. He's a good boy. I can almost feel it rather than hear it. It's such a palpable murmur. It's really strong and it's not good news. It's a really big murmur there. Oh. So his heart, when, it, when it's beating, yeah. instead of it being really crisp and boom boom, it's a big loud whoosh boom, whoosh boom. Okay. So his heart's not able to pump the blood that his body needs mm -hmm. because it's leaking all through it. Mm -hmm. I'm actually quite concerned about Benji. It's not like a heart condition that might pose a problem in a few years' time. This is an issue that could kill Benji any day. He's either got some sort of obstruction in his heart that's not allowing the blood to, to pump out properly mm -hmm. or he's got a, a, a hole mm -hmm. in there or mm -hmm. some sort of leaky valve that's meaning that the heart is no longer an efficient pump. It, it, it's, it's got leaks everywhere. So it's pretty bad then? Yeah. I don't like what I'm hearing. Okay. Okay. Mm. I think the best thing is that we organise for you to go up to Sash. And from there, we can get a good look at that heart, understand what we're facing here. Look, if it's a money thing, I, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll, you know, I'll beg and borrow or whatever, I'll, I'll do it. I haven't got that much money, but whatever I've got, if you can help him. 
Um, he's the best thing that's ever happened to me and um, I don't, I don't want to let him go. I don't want to look after him. Well, you're giving him every shot at that. It's not really the news that I wanted to hear. Thinking about the pain um, that Benji's going through, a bit distressed and a little bit scared about what's going to happen moving forward. We're together on this now, all right? Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, um, I don't feel like you've got to fight this by yourself. Thank you. At SASH, Lisa is attempting to insert a catheter into a tiny, dehydrated and malnourished kitten. But it's making the little six-week-old too distressed. Deary me. This one's had no vomiting or diarrhoea. He's eating on and off. He's just a little flat, so hopefully we can syringe feed him and that will be enough. So I don't think it's worth struggling with him to get that tiny little vein. We'll keep an eye on this little kitten and I'm glad he's here and we can watch him really closely. If he goes downhill at all, we can treat him straight away. I'm thinking about eating. You can drink on your own, really. Not 100% sure, it probably tastes a bit strange. Want some more? I'm not really suckling, I'm just jumping the end. I'm not supposed to bite it. It's been a big day for the little strays. The staff at SASH will monitor the tiny brothers overnight to make sure their condition doesn't deteriorate. The sick little kitten is on a drip, which is the most important thing. He had vomiting and diarrhoea and we're replenishing his fluids. His brother didn't want a catheter, but fortunately he's not the one that had gastro, so he's going to get away with just being syringe fed and hopefully he's not going to go downhill overnight. All right, let's take you in bed. Hey, okay. Look, your brother's in there fast asleep. Now don't disturb him. You can cuddle up and have a good little sleep as well. All right, he's on a drip and he's getting better. And you follow his lead. All right, kitty, and you get. Oh, good boy. What are you doing being born at this time of year? What are you doing at this time of year? You got it all the wrong way around. You got character. Hey, hey like your mum. <laughs> At Devil Ark in northwest New South Wales, Tim is about to examine Lucky. You're all right there. The tiny Tassie Devil Joey was born out of season, and Tim needs to make sure he's healthy. Uh, let's get some weights and just have a, a bit better look at him uh, and make sure that he's healthy. In you go, buddy. He's settled right down now. Yeah. Hello, mate. He's almost half a kilo on the dot. Well, physically, he's perfect. My main worry is that if we don't do something and we put him back in that yard with mum and other breeding devils, he might not stay that way. Now, I've really got a dilemma. I've got a healthy mum and Joey, and under normal circumstances, they'd be fine. But these aren't normal circumstances. They're in a yard that's been stocked with devils that are about to breed. If he leaves mum and enters that environment in the state that it's in, he'll be killed. So Tim, what do you think we should do with Lucky? Well, that's what I'm thinking about now. We can leave mum and Lucky Boy in an intensive yard like this, and she can rear him and finish weaning. But that means mum is not going to breed this year. She's, she's way out of sync. And we need Joey's. This is a conservation project. She must breed. I've made a decision. It wasn't an easy decision to make but I'm going to intervene and I'm going to Henry Lucky. The Devil Joey will now return to the Australian Reptile Park with Tim for around the clock care. Well, this is it, mate. Yep. There's um, no sentimental goodbyes for mum. Um, it's, it's natural, in two months she'd wean him anyway. Yep. Plan is that she breeds again in a month's time and Lucky Boy's back here and uh, doing his own thing in six months, hey? Yeah, after you. So. Tim's going to hand me the baby, which I think is great. We're going to have a nice, healthy baby uh, to come back for breeding in a couple of years. And Mum's going back in for breeding this year. All right, mate, well, I'm off back to work. Well, good luck. Got the precious cargo. Yeah. Good luck with the real breeding season. Yeah. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> yeah, good on Thanks. you, mate. See ya.
Chris, how are you? How are you? This Good. is Mel. G'day, Hi. Mel. How are Benji. you? And Benji. Good this is Benji. I've heard about Benji. Benji, say hello. Hello, mate. He says a bit scary. Yeah. Hey, what's up? You got eyes under there? There they are. <laughs> All right, come on in. We'll have a have a look. Thank you. Chris is so concerned about Benji's heart murmur, he's come along to Sash with owner Mel to see specialist surgeon Dr Andrew Marchewski. Okay, let's have a listen. Good boy. Is you all right? Yeah, Benj, that's a big murmur. L listening to Benji's heart, you're not getting the normal dup, 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 dup sound. It's really a shh, shh, shh sound. So the, the blood's, it's, it's what we call a murmur, uh, and the blood's not flowing how it should. Out of six, which is how we grade murmurs, it's sort of four or five. And generally when they're like that at this age, it means that we have to do something to fix it or he'll have a short life. And that means, you know, you've got a year, maybe, and it might not even be that long. Uh, I knew, you know, there could be bad news, but nothing that severe. So I think the first thing we need to do is a heart ultrasound okay. so that we can find out exactly where all this problem starts and then we can go from there. There are a number of things that could be going wrong with Benji's heart. He could have a hole in his heart. He could have a valve that's leaking. He could have a valve that's too narrow. Um, none of them are good things. Some of them we can fix, some of them we can't, but we need to find out a bit more before we can tell. So here we've got Benji's heart on the screen. Specialist cardiologist Dr Rita Singh is conducting the ultrasound. My first impression is that we do have some moderate enlargement of the right atrium and some moderate thickening to the wall of the right ventricle. Well, everything we're seeing now is all consistent with pulmonic stenosis. Pulmonic stenosis is a rare and extremely dangerous condition which, if left untreated, can lead to sudden death. So Rita, does he look like one of those dogs where something can be done surgically? I think he would. He looks like he'd be a really good candidate um, for the correctional procedure. I guess all of this means that I've got to go and tell Mel that his dog needs surgery. It's not something we can ignore. It's not something we can give medicines to. His little dog's going to have to have surgery and otherwise he'll die. It's not like open heart surgery. We can do a surgery where we put a, a catheter into a vein down in his leg, thread it all the way up into his heart, mm -hmm. and then we use a balloon to pass across that valve that's narrowed, the balloon's deflated, and then we've got it across there, we blow it up, and it essentially tears open that narrowed area and allows blood to flow. Given the information overload that Mel's had to experience today, I'd love to be able to say to him, you know what mate, take some time out and think about it. But the situation with this heart condition is that it's not possible. With every day that goes by, Benji is damaging his heart more and more. He has to go into surgery and he has to go in right now. At SASH, life-saving surgery to repair Benji's heart is about to get underway. The little pup is suffering pulmonic stenosis, a condition which could kill him. Well, as usual, you're in charge and I'll just do what you tell me to do, so. Okay, let's get in there. <laughs> Cardiologist Dr Rita Singh will be performing the delicate procedure, working closely with specialist surgeon Dr Andrew Marchewski. First thing we've got to do is pass a wire into his heart via his jugular vein. I can see it, right there. Have you got it? No, not yet. We're having a few few issues here. Just he's so small, he's got such a small vein that we're trying to thread this really quite big needle down, but um, we'll get there. Oh. oh. That looks like it's going. Thank you, Andrew. So can we just have a picture? There we go. <laughs> The guide wire is now in place. The next stage of the procedure will be even more delicate. We've actually got to get a catheter into his heart and this one's got a little balloon on the end of it. 
the balloon will be used to force an opening in Benji's constricted heart valve. That's it. Really fiddly this part, really hard. Come on, there you go. With the catheter now fully inserted... Wait, wait, wait. Hang on a sec, just stop for a sec. The surgery is at a critical stage. The balloon now is sitting just over that narrow valve. It gets a little more risky when we actually start trying to blow it up. Yeah. All right, shall we just go? Yep. Yes. All right, go. Ready? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Hello. Here we go. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Just perfect. He's not happy. At this point, Benji's life is hanging in the balance. The balloon has done its job making an opening in the valve, but the blood can't start flowing until the balloon is out. The dog's not doing well. We need to move on, Andrew. The dog's not doing well. Yeah, Which yeah. part do you want to do? Uh, I'll, I'll pull the balloon in. Okay. Just, you got the wire? Yeah. Just go really the team slow. has just seconds to get the balloon out right, so Benji's right. heart can recover. All right, pull out. Pull it now. 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 Um, we've just put a balloon across his valve, opened it up, and now his heart's basically pumping like a normal one. It's, it really can't be any better than that. I'm down off the mountain, and the mountain weather's certainly gone. Little Lucky safely stashed him a pouch. I hope he likes his new home at the reptile park. Tim is now on his way to the Australian Reptile Park with Lucky. The little Tasmanian devil was born outside the regular breeding season at Devil Ark and now needs to be hand raised. I'm back at the Reptile Park and Lucky's had a rest and hasn't had a feed for about five hours now, so I'm going to try and feed him straight away. Hey, buddy. Devils are really messy feeders, so I'm going to take him out of his beanie, which is his new pouch, and put him into a little towel. Tuck the arms down, and I'm going to wrap it around him. That's it. Good boy. Now it's time for your milk, buddy. This can be a stressful experience for Lucky. If he goes a day or so without feeding well, he's going to become dehydrated uh, and could go downhill really quickly. He's healthy right now. I want to keep him like that. This is an artificial milk, and this is what Lucky's going to drink for the next while. Now, there's not much in there, and I expect him only to take a little bit of that. It's nice and warm, but I just want him to get a taste for it. It's going to be a little bit different to Mum's, but if he took the littlest bit, I'd be a happy man. Will you take this? Here you go. Good boy. This is the first feed, and he's chewing away, sucking away. That's just great. You're doing really good, mate. A little bit more. That's a boy. It's a positive step for little Lucky. The Joey will remain at the reptile park for the next six months. Hopefully then, he'll return to Devil Ark to live permanently. That was great. I couldn't be happier. Lucky was calm. He didn't drink a lot of milk, but he did drink. Things are looking good for Lucky. Hey, buddy, huh? Yeah, you're still pretty flat. Why are you not eating well? It's been 24 hours since two stray sick kittens were admitted to Sash. Your brother's on a drip and you're going to have to go on one too, sweetie. The six-week-old brothers uh -huh. were close to death, suffering dehydration and malnutrition. I'm really worried about the smallest kitten. He's still really flat. We gave him overnight to see if he would start eating on his own or take the syringe feeding, and he doesn't want a bar of it. He's getting progressively more lethargic. So I'm going to put him on fluids, and he's going to feel a whole lot better once they get into him. With the life-saving fluids slowly being administered, Lisa now turns her attention to helping the little kittens consume some much-needed food. That's good. Yummy. Nice. That's a good boy. You're 
going to feel so much better. But we can't send you home till you eat by yourself. That's a boy. Look, these kittens are homeless, so they need a lot of love. They, they need a lot more nutrition and care than they've been getting. Linda and Steve have done a wonderful job bringing them in and looking after them. And without them, they'd be on the street and they wouldn't have stood a chance. As comfy as can be. Hey, Benj. You coming out? You coming out? At SASH, it's been just 24 hours since the intricate surgery to fix little Benji's heart murmur. You're looking far too relaxed, isn't you? I mean, and the great thing about what we've done is we've done an amazing thing for his heart, um, but done it totally non-invasively. So he's got a little nick in his vein there, and yet he's right to go home. For owner Mel, it's been an emotional ordeal, and he's anxious to be reunited with his brave little mate. I'm really, really excited to see him. <laughs> what they say is true, you know, a, a dog is a man's best friend. Um, and he really is, he really is my best little buddy and uh, I can't wait to see him. Who's that? I know. Yeah. Oh no, but there you go, boy. <laughs> oh, oh sorry. goodness me. Don't... I'm sorry, I left you for a couple of days, didn't I, buddy? <laughs> I feel like a, a big load or a pressure has been lifted off my shoulders. Um, and just to have him back, uh, I feel so happy. Uh, it's just so happy. <laughs> Benji, yeah, Benji, Benji. Hey, buddy. When I first met Benji, he was a quiet, just reserved little dog, and it was, he just didn't look happy. But you see him now, and he's bouncing around and just being a crazy puppy. So I, I think we made a big difference to him. Hey, buddy. We're going to go home now. We're going home. Benji, go home. Yeah, he's a good boy. It's been two days since these tiny brothers arrived at Sash fighting for their lives. Sorry to wake you, buddy, but I've got good news. But before Lisa gives the all clear for these kittens to return to foster carers, Steve and Linda. It's dinner time. She has one final okay. test for the two strays. Yeah, it is. It's dinner time. Now show me how you eat. Come on. Hey, look at you. You're a little piggy. Hey, is that yummy? When this little kitten came in, I was worried that there was a chance he wouldn't even make it. And now he's eating by himself, and that is a huge improvement. His feisty little brother is also showing he has a healthy appetite. Ah, I'm so proud of you, little one. Look at your messy face. Is that yummy? In reception, Steve and Linda are eager to take the little brothers home. Oh, it would be great to see them jumping around and see their appetite up and uh, yeah, yeah it'd be good to see. Fingers crossed it's all good from here. Look how good they look. Oh, thank you, Ta. Oh, hello. You guys are standing up and looking alert. <laughs> Just excellent. There you go. Hello. It's pretty amazing how caring some people are. These kittens were strays, they didn't stand a chance, and then Linda and Steve took them in. These kittens are going to warm the hearts of whoever takes them in, just like they've done to mine. Do you think you'll find these little guys home? Or are you gonna... Oh boy, it's fairly easy, I think, too. Um, except I want to make sure they go somewhere good. Otherwise uh, they'll be staying yeah. with you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't give people ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to go home and see Mum now? Yes, no, maybe. What about your sister? She's waiting for you. Is she alright? Come on, come on. There you go, mate. Come on, come on. Go play. As for brave little Benji, it's been eight weeks since the operation to repair his heart. Bye, mate. 
No way. Come on. I'm seeing it. I'm not sure I'm believing it, though. <laughs> I expected a change with Benji, an improvement, hopefully, but I didn't expect this. I just saw more in 50 metres than I saw before at all. Oh, Chris, it's amazing. The difference in him is amazing. He would have never have done that sprint ever before. That run there, it's better than any stethoscope, any ultrasound, mm. because that shows you that not only is he healthy, but he's happy as well. I can't describe to you in words how happy I feel just seeing him being himself or being this Benji that I never knew was there before. To see him happy, it, it, I feel I feel good inside myself. You know, it's 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 been a journey, and uh, uh, the the outcome is it's been it's been special. This has gone beyond my wildest expectations. Yeah, I can spend the next 15 years hanging out with him and you know, chilling out and, and doing all the things that we do. Yeah, and it's great. It's really great. Thank you. Thank you so much. No worries, mate. Thank you, Nathan. Cheers. Man. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.